Hello everyone, my name is Kale Yuan, and today I will be talking about the automated assembly of a satellite wiring harness MDP project, which served as my engineering honors design capstone experience. I'd like to take this time to thank my MDP faculty mentor, Dr. Peter Gaskell of the U of M Robotics Institute, our corporate sponsors at Northrop Grumman for helping make this project possible, as well as the rest of the 2020 NG Wire MDP cohort, whom I've worked very closely with throughout the course of this project. I wanted to start off by explaining what a wire harness is. In short, a wire harness is a bundled assembly of electrical cables and connectors that serve to transmit signals and power between different components of a larger system. These harnesses are commonly used both to organize the wires and to protect the wiring from the effects of vibration by bundling them together. And you'll find a wire harness in pretty much every modern spacecraft, aircraft, or motor vehicle, uh, including the one on the right, which is a satellite on display at the U of M Space Research Building. And depending on the complexity of the system, these wiring harnesses may consist of up to many thousands of wires. With that out of the way, what is the motivation for this project? Well, the space industry has recently experienced a resurgence in interest, and along with it, the demand for commercial satellites has increased dramatically. Our sponsor, Northrop Grumman, was having difficulty meeting increased consumer demand with its current uh, products, and as a result, it would benefit from increasing its satellite production efficiency. One of the major causes of delays in this process was traced back to wire harness assembly. Uh, historically, wire harness assembly has been difficult to automate due to uh, challenges in manipulating flexible wires with uh, robotic arms. Uh, as a result, uh, wire harnesses are mostly assembled by hand and the complexity of these harnesses leads to a high rate of human error. So that brings us to our project goal. We wanted to develop a machine that would be able to output a completely assembled wire harness when supplied with a harness input with minimal human interaction throughout the entire process. Going a little bit deeper into our project objectives, uh, we set the goals of developing a machine uh, that would be capable of cutting and tripping, aka processing wires and routing them into a harness shape. Uh, we also had secondary goals of achieving wire splicing and termination into connectors, labeling and lacing. Uh, due to the present challenges of the COVID-19 pandemic though, we renegotiated our goals with our sponsors and eventually set aside the secondary goals uh, to be achieved in the future. Um, and instead we redefined success into proving our machine's capabilities by routing a sample harness. That brings us to our project approach. I'd like to start with an overview of my personal contribution to this project. As a member of the hardware subteam, I contributed to the concept generation of the machine. I developed the wire routing strategy and order of operations. Later in the project, I was involved in the testing and development of the embedded systems, and I critically designed most of the machine hardware and structure. Uh, I was able to complete most of my design work over the summer, uh, where I was involved in the project with the MDP self-guided internship program. The team uh, determined a list of challenging aspects of this project. Other than the obvious need to develop the structure mechanisms as well as the embedded systems of the machine, we also identified the need to read an input harness file as well as the need to develop testing and validation methods for our machine capabilities. Uh, finally, we needed to ensure that the wire harness that our machine produced met all NASA workmanship standards. The concept that our team settled on was sort of a 3D printer for wires. The functionality between existing 3D printers and our machine are quite similar. Uh, just as a 3D printer would lay down plastic filament to create a 3D model, our machine would lay down wire onto a workspace to create a 2D representation of the harness, uh, which we could then refold into the full 3D harness. One of the primary motivations for choosing this design was to circumvent the problems associated with robotic manipulation of wires. In this design, the wire is processed in one continuous path from the spool to the extruder, as shown in the left flow chart, uh, which means that we avoid having to regrip or reposition the wire any more than we need to. Uh, However, we did identify some tasks that uh, we considered too difficult uh, to complete with the resources and time we had available. And so uh, we made the allowance with our sponsor's approval to have the human operator uh, take care of these tasks, including uh, handling shielded cables and twisted pairs. 
On the way to designing this machine, the team conducted several comprehensive literature reviews, uh, both to determine the feasibility of and to investigate the methods of wire harness assembly automation. Uh, we discovered that many of the individual tasks that we were pursuing have already been automated and have quite established automation methods, including the cutting and stripping, crimping and labeling steps, as well as the CNC translation stage in three axes. Our challenge was then to integrate all of these devices into one machine that could perform all these steps continuously. Using this information, we designed the machine in five subsystems. These subsystems are the wire extruder, the three axis translation stage, the wire switcher and selector unit, the cutting and stripping unit, as well as passive and active anchor clips attached to a pegboard underneath the machine. These systems were designed entirely in CAD because I completed this design work over the summer period when I didn't have access to the lab or uh, testing materials due to working remotely. I will now go briefly into the functionality and design of each of these subsystems, starting with the wire extruder. So the wire extruder is actually a repurposed filament extruder from a 3D printer, and the functionality is extremely similar. The wire extruder serves to lay down the wire into the workspace. One difference between these two devices is the addition of a tension sensor on our machine designed to get the tension of the wire during routing in order to implement feedback control. The translation stage serves to move the wire extruder around the workspace, uh, depending on where the wire is needed. And the design was based on existing CNC machines. Uh, we have a relatively large footprint of the machine, uh, one meter on each side to accommodate fully the unfolded wire harness we expect to route. And uh, although there were different design requirements for the XY axes and the Z axes, um, we used stepper motors on all of them for speed and precision. Moving on to the wire switcher, the design of the wire switcher was also influenced by existing 3D printer uh, filament switchers this time. And the wire switcher is capable of taking up to eight different wire spools and selecting a single one of them to feed down through the extruder. Because there is only one outlet on the wire switcher, this greatly simplifies the wire path between the wire switcher and the rest of the machine. Next, the cutting and stripping unit. Uh, the functionality of the cutting and stripping unit is pretty self-evident, and the design was again influenced by existing self-contained units. Uh, this machine satisfies our design requirement and is able to cut and strip the wire without having to rotate by processing one end at a time in sequence. The main innovation of this particular cutting and stripping unit is the extreme miniaturization, which has allowed us to fit the entire machine on top of the extruder on the machine tool head. This allows the machine to move with the tool head and minimizes the uh, length of the wire that we are capable of handling. Finally, the clips. We have two different types of clips, active clips and passive clips. The role of the active clip is to fixture a single wire during the routing process and is actuated by a servo for this purpose, controlled by our Raspberry Pi through a servo controller. On the other hand, the passive clips uh, generally uh, are designed to guide the path of the wire during routing and are not actuated at all. Uh, one particular clip to point out is on the far left. This uh, we call the cactus clip, and the cactus clip has the purpose of positioning wire ends for termination into connectors manually. Finally, this brings us to the results and discussion at the end of our project cycle. So overall, the machine was actually effective in routing our demo harness. This demo harness was a simplified version of the original sample harness provided by Northrop Grumman and was intended only to demonstrate the motion capabilities and the geometric aspects of the harness that we were able to handle. Much more testing will be required to see if we can actually achieve the full harness. So even though our prototype is incomplete, we did show potential. Uh, this is because we were able to effectively demonstrate that uh, the routing process that we identified was feasible. Uh, this was a big step up from previous uh, attempts at wire manipulation, uh, which were both expensive and not economically uh, sound. So uh, despite all this, uh, we are still missing some subsystems, and even the subsystems that we do have uh, have not been fully tested. However, uh, we are very satisfied that the main concept of wire routing has been demonstrated. Uh, luckily, the MDP program has already confirmed that uh, this project will be continued through next year, albeit with a different team. Uh, we do have a list of suggestions for this new team. Uh, we would like them to continue developing the routing algorithm as well as clips and active clips. 
And of course, they need to uh, finish implementing the unfinished systems that we do have and consider uh, looking into implementing the uh, additional functionalities that we don't have, including uh, wire crimping and the ability to handle uh, shield cables and twisted pairs. And that brings us to the end of my presentation. I will now uh, attempt to answer some questions. All right, uh, question number one, how did you get involved in this project? Well, like uh, several other students, I know I got involved in this project through the MDP program. And within the MDP program, I selected this uh, project because I had an interest in space as well as structural design as a aero slash ME dual major. Uh, and this uh, project seemed right up my alley and uh, I'm really glad I did get involved with this project. Question number two, how did, you connect with your capstone advisor uh, lab team. Uh, I felt like uh, I managed to connect very well with my uh, capstone advisor, uh, as well as the rest of the MDP team, even the uh, uh, corporate sponsors that we have on this team from Robert Grumman. Um, you know, as, uh, as part of MDP, they have you do uh, weekly agendas and follow-ups. And with all the time that our team spent in the lab together. Uh, we did get to know each other very well, uh, especially my capstone advisor, Dr. Gaskell. Um, since I was able to continue my involvement with the project over the summer, he was also my mentor during that period. And we had uh, weekly meetings uh, during then too with one-on-one uh, -on -one sessions. Uh, and uh, yeah, we were able to work very closely together. Uh, question number three, what hurdles were most difficult or least anticipated? Well, the answer to this one is pretty obvious. The uh, biggest challenge we faced in this past year uh, was dealing with the COVID pandemic. Uh, there were many things that we weren't able to accomplish because of COVID between uh, delays from suppliers that we ordered parts from to, you know, obviously the closing of the lab. Uh, we weren't able to work for uh, probably about two months of our entire plan session, uh, which, uh, you know, significantly delayed our progress and all, uh, ultimately resulted in us not being able to finish as much as project as uh, we would have liked. And um, I guess that sort of leads into uh, question number, what is it, question number four now. Um, is there anything you didn't have time for in this project that you wish you could explore? Uh, yes, definitely. Um, we initially intended to explore all of the design requirements, even the stretch goals uh, per se. Uh, this included the uh, goals to, you know, develop the crimping functionality for the machine, develop the lacing and labeling functionality for the machine. And uh, in fact, we did do a literature review in all of these aspects. Um, it's just that um, with all the delays in the design process, um, you know, me touching up on the work over the summer, uh, even in the fall, we weren't able to finish as much as we wanted to. So yeah, that was definitely um, something that we wanted to explore, but couldn't. Uh, but, you know, uh, next year's team will be able to um, explore that further. Uh, and then question number five, I guess. Let's see, let's see. Uh, how do you hope to use what you learned from this project in your future career? So um, as my first uh, MVP experience under a corporate team, uh, this experience was definitely a lot more structured uh, than uh, what I experienced previously on my uh, research MVP teams uh, with faculty members. Um, it's, I, I would say it's a lot more similar to um, the, you know, the type of work that you'd actually get uh, in an in industry environment, uh, especially since we were working so closely with uh, our corporate sponsors from Rupert Grumman who actually, you know, uh, work in the industry that we've been developing this project for. Um, so there's definitely uh, a lot of skills I expect to transfer over, specifically like the project management stuff. It's very important. Uh, I had to use some of that myself over the summer uh, when I was working on my self-guided uh, experience. Uh, but also just the, all, all the, uh, the processes, the, um, you know, the, uh, what's the word? Uh, all, all the expectations um, of that corporate environment. We were, we were sort of exposed to on this team. Uh, through our involvement with uh, Northrop Grumman. So, um, yeah, it's, uh, it's a lot of work, but uh, I think it was worth it in the end. And uh, it's a good place to end it on. Uh, yeah, thank you for sitting through this uh, question and answer session, uh, if you're still here. Um, I did uh, very much enjoy both uh, this project and uh, the work I've had to do for honors. Uh, and it's been an honor uh, talking to you today. So thank you very much.